Word. What up, what up, what up, everybody? This is Shammy D, and we are here continuing the For the Culture webinar series for all DJs out there, creatives, any creative can really tune into this too, because principles are principles, no matter what you do, where you work, like if it's a principle, it generally applies across the board. And I'm super excited about today because I'm here talking with my boy, my boy. Like we got <laughs> stories, <laughs> good travel stories. I, from college, Abe Cahuto, I he is also my web designer. And we're here to talk about how to like, look at your website and figure out the three things that you need to make sure your site is popping so you can start making money. Because now, as always, is the time to really dig into what you got going on, dig into your assets and see what you can improve so you can come out the other side of all this ready to go and uh, set yourself up for success. So, what up, Abe? What up, Mr. Shammy D? Thanks You're for having me on, man. Of course, brother. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this, man. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background so people know what you've done and where you're coming from because you've done a lot. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I am a web designer, among other things, as I usually do in my <laughs> intro, uh, but I also do uh, a lot of other stuff besides web design, but um, right now that's, uh, that's my, big, um, my, big, my biggest thing right now is that's how I um, uh, make the most of my time. Yes. <laughs> so I do a lot of different kinds of web websites. So uh, like you were saying, um, we've, we've worked together on your site, um, yeah. for a couple of revisions, right? We're like yes. getting, just getting ready to, to, to drop the, the latest revision, but yes. we're gonna, we're gonna study the current one right now on your DJ site, your, uh, uh, your musician site and, uh, just everything you get on under your umbrella. Um, what else do I do? I work for, I work with, uh, some small companies, some medium companies, uh, some, some, some like food brands to build their websites. So everything from like, you know, a speaker site or an author site all the way up to like, um, bigger company websites. Like I've, I've, uh, I've developed some of those. So I really enjoy it. Um, I love getting people's stories out there. I love, um, uh, helping people to, um, tell their stories online and also just to to serve the, their communities and to serve the people that they're that they're serving their customers um so that is always different that's always different um depending on um uh the the, the type of business or the type of service that you're doing so you know the, all these websites uh have to be um you know built accordingly totally um, but yeah totally totally and one of the things that you are particularly good at is helping your clients kind of tell the story in related to websites or just related to the things that they're doing like storytelling is a pretty important component in what you do yeah yeah i think it's just really important just to be like really clear like in terms of you know the audience that you're serving or the customers that you're trying to attract just like what you're trying to put down like so you know that could be that doesn't have to be anything really complicated in terms of websites like a lot of times like a one-page website is really really all you need mm -hmm. um for example, um, uh, everything that's going on right now <laughs> with, uh, with COVID-19, um, it's crazy times, man. Like yeah. it's super crazy. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm seeing, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm based here in Long Beach, California, the LB sizzle, LB sizzles. Home, of, home, home of the Snoop deal, double jizzle. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, what I'm seeing from my local community and it's pretty awesome. I mean, despite how unfortunate everything is with restaurants closing down, bars not even able to be open. But what I'm seeing in terms of like uh, those websites from those restaurants and, uh, and, and bars and local businesses is like, they're evolving really fast. And so what could, what, what has been um, typically a brewery over here in Long Beach um, has turned into a bodega. Uh -huh. So it's pretty crazy. Like they're just doing takeout orders to go orders, but from their website perspective, like they were not set up that way. So what's happening now is like a big simplification of like all these websites happening. So they're just like going down to like one page websites and saying, here's our to go uh, menu. Here's our phone number to call in phone orders. And like, they're just trying to survive that way. And like, that's a good sort of framing around like what, do DJs and creatives need to put on their own site, right? Like Absolutely. what are the bare, necess 
bare bare necessities you know what are the bare essentials that you need to to put on there absolutely because a lot of a lot of people think they need to throw like everything in the kitchen sink in or it's it's just like not well organized or it's uh or they might not have enough even it's like not even enough to be considered necessities uh and and it that just might be because they don't have the assets needed to create the bare minimum that's that's required to really get the story and the message across um so i'm really glad that we are talking about this uh so what would be what would be the first thing that you think DJs need to know in helping their website like work for them. Yeah, so um, we talked a little bit before this call. We did. <laughs> and, we did. <laughs> and just to, just to just to like really simplify it, we're like, okay, what what can we come up with? Like three things that a DJ or a creative or an artist can can put up on their website to um, just basically just get it up and like get get to what they do best, right? Yeah. So the first thing is, I think, a way to introduce yourself. Um, you want to, when people land on your URL, uh, you want to just give them, um, you know, really quickly, like on your homepage, like uh, a way to like know, like, and trust you, right? Like as, as any business owner um, should uh, with their customers. Uh, but um, a, a way to do that is, you know, you've seen it all over the internet, like people's about pages or your bio. It's basically storytelling. You're telling a short story about yourself on your homepage um, about what you do, uh, who you are and you know why you do it um, mm-hmm. and even how you do it and like that doesn't have to be like too complicated you can write that in a couple sentences um, uh, use some pictures uh, um, and, uh, and and really just uh, uh, just set it up that way yes so one of the things that in in the systems workshop that I do covering the the things you need to set up for success in your business or to grow your business. One of the nine components is making sure that you have your assets together Mm. and which is photos, text, bio, um, video, music, et cetera. And these, why it's so important within the system is because these are things that when potential clients come to your site, this is how people get to know you. Yeah. essentially right so these this it's a critical requirement you talk about bare minimum like these are the things that you really need to have on deck so that you can create an effective website because all this kind of relates to each other when potential clients are checking you out to see oh do i want to hire this person well what do they sound like what do they look like let me see them rock an event and that these things that abe had mentioned also relates to the system that I've been discussing since January. If people have hopped on to the, to my workshop uh, as part of the components that you need to become successful in your business, like to be able to grow. Yeah. Yeah. So for like a working example and to put you on the spot, Mr. Do it. Chance, Do uh, it. we, we used your, like to use your website. Like when we started your website, like I had a laundry list of things that I needed from you. Right. Yes. I was like, what do I need? I need, I need your album covers. I need, uh, all your MP3s. Um, I need, uh, uh, you know, photos that you've taken either via a photo shoot. You've worked with a couple of great photographers to like get some good, um, uh, you know, either, uh, headshots or mm-hmm. professional shots, uh, mm-hmm. or you in action, um, and, um, testimonials, um, from some of your clients. Yes. And we've, we've gathered those assets at different times. Like we didn't have them all at the same time. Um, just to launch the site and that's okay. Like that's, that's totally cool for, for people not to have that all at once. Like what, what, what do you, what do you have on you? Like, do you have your music? Do you have um, any like mixes? Like if you're a, a say a, a wet, a wedding or an event DJ, do you have like some mixes that you've done that you've recorded that you could give a sample so people get a, get a taste of like how you mix or how you um, uh, do events or even how you MC, um, right? Um, how you MC events. So any of those kind of things that show off your work style, show off how you do your job um, or um, the type of uh, 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 projects that you do, like is totally cool for your website. And there's like so many easy ways to get them up on your site now too. Like we got YouTube, we got Vimeo. Uh, What are some of the other uh, audio ones? Oh, Mixcloud, Soundcloud. Um, 
I think those are the main ones. There might be a few other kind of sites, but those are like the primary ones. Spotify, if you have Spotify. your music on Spotify. Yeah, if you already have your stuff up on some of these sites, like just have your website be your personal place on the internet to like combine all that stuff together um, and uh, just, you know, keep people from like searching around everywhere, right? Like you want to meet people where they are on these platforms for sure. Like, especially if you're, you know, a musician and you, you are, you're streaming on different platforms, like, you know, get those pennies in, right? Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like a place to have it all together, like um, a good example, if uh, uh, any viewers out there are using Instagram, like the, the whole link in bio thing is like, you know, really, really uh, popular right now. And like they're using um, a lot of people are using services to like gather links, whether it be um, stuff that they posted about uh, or um, events that they've been to that have like a URL on them, say like an event bride or something like link in bio, like, uh, you know, compiles them on like you you ultimately want something like that on your own personal website. So when people uh, uh, are searching for your information or are searching for how to find you or how to listen to you, like they, they just put in your name in, in, in their search bar and they can just find you. Right. So you want to build up that, um, that search engine clout and you do that just by having a place um, like, you know, shamid.com uh, that can uh, uh, just uh, be that home base for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, I mean, should we show them, should I show them my page? Yeah. So that they get an idea. Let's do it. Cool. Let me, let me do this. And uh, so I live in an, I live in an apartment and it's an apartment filled with creatives. So my neighbor sings opera and she has a very powerful voice. So if you happen to hear a tint of somebody singing opera while we're doing this webinar, that's my neighbor. She's that good. <laughs> I just want you to know. So I'm pulling up the music page on my site and I'm sharing my screen with you all. So one of the things that Abe and I had discussed when we were putting the site together is how how do we organize everything into all my musical assets into one place? Mm -hmm. And we decide to do this. So I make music as well, writer, producer, performer. So I put my originals up because I really wanted to showcase that. I have a few remixes that I've done. So I showcase that, but I tell people when they want to listen to things here, go scroll all the way down to mixtapes so they can see all the mixtapes that I have that I've done. And, even this is like, I was a DJ for Desert Storm Radio at one point. So this is like a series of online radio shows that I did over the course of a year. And all these links, like the most recent thing I did is called Summer Never Dies. And this was, this is hosted on Mixcloud. So when they click on here, they can go in and here is, it's more of a pop mix. So you can see I have songs from Drake, G-Eazy, Shawn Mendes, et cetera. Um, but other mixes, uh, with Abe's graphic design genius, he did the <laughs> Douse with House covers. And so I have, it's a series. And so this is all house music. So when I'm talking to people and they're like, oh, send us examples of your work, I can say, oh, here, this mix is pop. This mix is house. This mix is R&B. And it's all put together, very neatly organized in one place. Any thoughts on this, Abe? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I, I might have done those covers, but you did everything else. So like in addition to everything that you do, uh, you know, being a DJ and a musician, like you also got your Photoshop, um, Photoshop chops on. <laughs> I do, I do. Thank you, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so so good, great job on that. But like just the organization of this page, like uh, from the mixtapes to um, the original music, like, um, like this is like already like intermediate, like advanced um, for a website. Um, but it, you know, the, the, the idea is still there. Like just show your work. Right. Right. There's a really good book. Um, I, uh, re recommend it by, um, an author called Austin Cleon called show your work. And, um, yeah, it's, it's basically opening up your process. And so that's what a lot of, uh, uh websites are for now is, you know, to give, um, an inside track into the artist, into, um, uh, the business owner, uh, or, um, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you're up to the creative, the creative process. And like, people want to see that stuff. People want to linger and like, know more about you. Like we were saying earlier in the webinar about the no like and trust factor, right? Yes. Like people get to know you from like, 
your your the text that you write on your site um, the, the photos that you put up there to show what you look like. Mm -hmm. And then people start to like you when they go through to something like your music page champs and, um, uh, look at your different mixes or listen to your different mixes and see like, Oh, okay. Like this is the kind of music that he plays. Um, would that be a good fit for my event? Would that be a good fit for my wedding? Would that be a good fit for, um, uh, you know, my party? Um, right. and so, you know, as people come to your site, they're asking themselves all these different questions. And if it's not for them, they're going to leave, um, which is fine, right? Like you want to have the people that, that you want in, in, in your, uh, in your, whatever, uh, whatever you call it in your program, whether you like funnel or your, yeah. uh, your ecosystem um, or whatever. Um, but uh, um, that's, 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 that's a little bit about the, the no like, and trust factor. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, even something say like an event calendar on your, your homepage saying like what events you're spinning at uh, in the next, uh, you know, couple months like that's like, okay, like people can go to that and say, oh, that's that type of club or, oh, that's that type of corporate function. So they can get a, a, already a sense of like how you're working, right? Yes. Like how you're working and the types of clients that you've said yes to. Mm -hmm. And that's a great part of like having your own business and having your own website is like, you know, a lot of times you can say yes to certain clients and you can say no to certain type, types of clients once you get more mature in your business mm -hmm. um, and you start to see like, okay, I like to do these kinds of events or I like to do, or I don't like to do these other kinds of events. So you think about your website as being um, a way to filter out the people that you do want to work with. Yes, absolutely. Based on what you, based on the content that you're putting up there. Yep. Right. So if you are not like, if you are a wedding DJ, you're less likely to put up like a all super ratchety trap mix as a way to attract clients, unless that's the client you want to attract trappity, 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 ratchety, trappity, ratchety, 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 ratchety <laughs> if that's your bag, that's your bag, get your money, right? Get yeah. your money and turn it the F up on that wedding. But like, it's, it's all relative toward where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do, because what you put out tells a story. It has a message to it and the right people will like it. And as people tend to like things, they'll start trusting you the more it shows up. I want, I, I want you to talk more about the trust part of the no like trust um, scheme. Yeah, sure. So trust comes from like the whole entire like process, right? So everything from um, the photos that you put up to the music that you put up, um, if you have music samples or mixes um, to um, uh, your, your overall design, you know, the colors that you use, like uh, as visitors come to visit your site, like they're picking up on all these like, you know, unconscious signals, whether yeah. we like it or not, like they're judging, you know, your stuff. So, um, you know, the, 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 quiz, the quickest thing to do is like just to get over it because we're all self-conscious, right? Yeah. Uh, but, to, but to really like think about them, like who is, who are your ideal clients? Like who do you want to serve? Like what makes sense to attract those types of clients? So right. that, that, that is, that is, that comes from like, you know, um, like you did, you know, like hiring a designer, um, to, to go over that with you and really good designers are able to do that. Um, but there is a way to, for you to do it yourself as well. Like you can, um, if, if you have a, a, a sense of, um, you know, how to use certain tools, uh, uh, website builder tools, like you can, you can put that together um, yourself, but, um, uh, going back to the trust thing. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's everything. It's your story. It's your design. Uh, it's, it's the work that you show like your music. Um, it's the type of, other events that you've done um, that you can show off. Uh, it's your testimonials. So like um, all of these things um, uh, contribute to the trust factor and no like and trust. And one more thing is um, if, if you don't have all of that, all of those assets, like you were mentioning in your, in your program um, available, like I think the best thing to do is like to get clients to call you to actually have that even more personal touch um, and actually just get him on the phone. Because I mean, I mean <laughs> in the times of Corona, man, like human contact is so, <laughs> yeah. it's so rare. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I don't even know how long this is going to last, but uh, right. uh, you know, hopefully it's going to, it's going to, it's going to peter out um, uh, sooner rather than later. But like, this is a good, good sort of exercise, right? Like how yeah. can we get people to, uh, to get in contact with us? And if you are better over the phone, if you have, uh, you know, you have good, uh, you got, you got the gift of gab, as yeah. some people like to say, uh, and that's how you earn your business, then like get them there as soon as you can, right? Like use buttons on your website to say, um, you know, 
um, set, uh, call me or, or, or right. put your phone number like straight up if you're uh, able to do that. Um, um, so contact, contact form even um, for people, for people to leave their own phone number, like, like on your site. Yep. Uh, 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 so you can call them back. So um, yeah, the, the contact process is, is, uh, is basically our second, second of the third, third, th three things, right? Yes. Wanna... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Do, do we want to, do you want to jump to, should we look at the other websites first before jumping into the, the contact part? What do you think? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's I'm go. Up. Let's go I'm do it. To it. Cool. Pull them up. Cool. So uh, we were just, so one of the things that, so in working with a web designer, when you're working with a good web designer or specifically a great one like Abe, one of the things that they will make you do that what he made me do was like, do your homework find sites that you like or sites that uh, DJs that you like, check out their website and see what appeals to you and what doesn't. It's a really good way for you to start figuring out what's going to work or what you want to work on your website. Um, so one of the, we, we discussed a couple sites earlier. So this is one of an, uh, an amazing DJ here in LA who, and I'm going to share my screen now amazing DJ here in LA who does a lot of high profile events. Her name is DJ Michelle Pessy, Pessy, Pesci. Um, I forget how to say her last name properly, but she's done a lot. Dope DJ. I've seen her spin. Um, she has, she has a navigation bar up here, but her whole site is on one page. And when you click on the different aspects of her navigation, it pulls you to the different parts of the page, right? So looking at this, Abe, what is the story that you get from this? Yeah, so um, this is a pretty good example because right when we get here, we see a huge picture of her behind the tables and then like her name is huge. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think it's really important when you get to uh, you know a website to 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 keep having that connection for visitors like between the name and the face the name and the face right no like and trust so we know that this chick is called Michelle Pesci or Pesky or whatever um, and then it goes directly into uh, from from the uh, big photos into her story right and so let's look at the first pair, like the first couple sentences. So Michelle Pesci is an internationally acclaimed DJ, founder, CEO of the artist agency Nona Entertainment and a co-founder of Woman Collective. She was recently featured in InStyle Magazine's 2020 Badass Women, along with 49 others, including Nancy Pelosi, Billie Eilish, Judy Chicago, Melina Matsukas, and so on and so forth. So she's name dropping like a mofo, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but once you get to a certain level uh, um, as, as a DJ, like, or even a celebrity, like, you know, that's, that's just more forms of, you know, what we like to call social proof. Um, so, um, you know, you could totally lie about it, but like, what good does that do about anything, right? right? Like we want to be truthful about, you know, where we've been. So if you don't have names to drop, then don't drop names, like show off your work, like rely on what you're really good at. And if that's, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 rubbing elbows with the, with the rich and famous, then like, you know, use that on your site as part of your story, because that's going to attract those same types of clients, um, those t same types of, uh, say booking agents or those same types of, um, um, you know, um, uh, promoters that, uh, that want to put you on. Um, so after that first sentence, like that, I mean, that first sentence is just like, okay, this is it. Like she wants to do these kinds of things, right? She wants to do, uh, things that get her in, in style magazines, like 2020 badass women. Uh, she wants to, um, know that along with being a DJ, she's also a founder of like an artist agency. So she's like multidimensional. Um, and, um, you know, she has those business chops and she knows, and, and, and you won't basically come here and, uh, try to work with DJ Michelle Pesci and get like an unprofessional DJ. Right. Like, so this is all like social proof and social signaling on her website, just via text, just via just like writing, writing out a couple lines, um, that, uh, uh, tell us a lot, 
uh, and you know, this is the, this today is the first time I saw this page. So, you know, that's telling me. So like, if you scroll down, um, past the story, like what else do we see on this page? So click for mixes, huge, uh, photo, um, uh, album cover ish type thing. Um, and, uh, uh, a mix cloud, um, embedded audio player. So this is pretty easy to do. If you sign up for Mixcloud, if you sign up for SoundCloud, um, uh, with every track, um, uh, usually at the bottom when you click share or um, the share icon or whatever, like they'll give you an embed code, which, mm -hmm. which is a piece of HTML and sometimes some JavaScript, but you don't need to know anything technical about that. But it just says, you know, embed, embed is, is, is the word that you're looking for or uh, uh, embed this on your website. And basically what you do in sites like uh, WordPress, if you have a WordPress site or Squarespace, um, you would just copy and paste that exact code from like the brackets to uh, the, you know, the start brackets to the end brackets. So basically as is, um, uh, and then you put that in the section of your website builder um, and it will just come out like this, like just like the player. Uh, and then, uh, you know, people could just play right there on your website. It's not using up your bandwidth. It's using up uh, mm -hmm. Mixcloud's bandwidth. Um, and, uh, you know, it has those stats. So that's all, another way for people to spin or play, uh, get, get those plays up for you on say Mixcloud or Bandcamp or SoundCloud. Um, and it'll show just basic ba uh, from these embed players um, you know, how many people have played it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, more, more links to our music. And then this next section, the 2020 part, uh, this is more social proof. This is, these are the events that she's already done. This is the show your work that we were talking about before. Um, and um, she's just basically just doing lines of text, right? Warner Brothers uh, Oscar after party 2020. So like, she doesn't have the pictures of that or she might not necessarily have the pictures of that. But like, if you Google that 2020 Warner brothers, Oscar after party, you'll eventually probably get to those, whether it be on, um, what are those red car? What are the red carpet, uh, photo sites that have oh. all the big ass watermark on it? Getty images. Getty images. Yeah. <laughs> You'll eventually get to Getty images, right? Yeah. Like all celebrity roads lead to Getty images. <laughs> so like, you know, these are all things like you can see what, what companies she's worked with, what um, festivals. So uh, what you were talking about, like with, um, you know, searching out other, your, your peers as websites, like just to see what you like and what you don't like. Like, this is just like a, 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 a really simple sort of even, uh, business building tactic is like look at where they've spun before right. and look at who they've worked with before do a little digging there right. and find the people that could possibly hire you for those same types of events so like i'm a big proponent of like you know there's no like zero sum game going on i think the world is big enough for like all of us creatives facts and <laughs> i think like you know there's just so many things going on that like uh in the dj and event event space like people fall out or people's um, um, schedules don't always line up. So they mm -hmm. can't always get their like, you know, the person that they work with all the time, um, especially when everyone's uh, you get to a point and you're just booked solid and you're just super busy. So there's going to be openings there. And for something like this, like this, she, she basically laid it out for a lot of like celebrity DJs that can, um, that want to uh, uh, operate in the same level as, mm -hmm. as uh, Michelle Pesci. Um, like it's all there. <laughs> it's all there for, for you to just like, you know, Google who are the, uh, the, the, the key decision makers at these events. And like, totally. you can just be like, Hey, like, I want to put my name in, I want to throw my name in the hat yep. and, um, here's my website. Right. Yep. But, but without a website, like you can't really do that. Like right. you can give a card at like a, um, uh, you know, at a, at a cocktail hour or whatever, when you meet, um, you know, certain, uh, decision makers, but like always having a website, always having a place on the internet that you could easily refer to is just like the most important thing. Like, Absolutely. and that's why we're really doing this webinar. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'll just keep it going. Um, she has press press. Yeah. So official things like look me up basically. And like a, a, a good note about this too, is like when you link out, if you click this and like an open it in a new window or whatever, um, or new, a new tab. Um, uh, like this is now, oh, this is just still her site, 
But um, in a lot of these press articles, like when you link out to something, say like, you know, Vogue magazine or someone, someone that's like covering you, a local, local newspaper website that actually covered you and mentioned you, like that actually adds to how people find you on Google. Mm -hmm. So like in that site, say if it was, say the New York Times wrote about you and mentioned DJ Michelle Pesci or Shammy D um, on the New York Times uh, about an event, like when people click on your name, because because they're probably going to hyperlink to your name, like that tells the search engines like that these two pieces of content are related. Mm -hmm. So like the more like press mentions that you have, the more people that you have writing about you. This is why people guest blog um, and linking back to your own website that that pops you up. So anytime um, you start to type in Michelle, probably even PES, like yeah. you'll start to see all those articles about her or and with you know, optimally on like with her name, uh, website at the top. Yeah. So like, that's what you want for your own website. Like not just to be like, you know, a static thing, but like people talking about you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then if I go back to her, her page, you see her socials and that's yep. it. Click on any of those. You can follow her on the social accounts. So that's also a, an important thing. So if you are more, um, you know, Instagram person and uh, posting more on Instagram, like that's great, right? But Instagram changes their algorithm all the freaking time, right? <laughs> and so your 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 posts or you, even your uh, Instagram stories might not even be seen by the people that you want to see, unless you know, like it, there's just no unless, like they just might not be seen by uh, by uh, by by the people that you want to see. So like. Uh, you, you, I mean, I do suggest like using social media, but at the same time, you do want something on the internet. That's like a home base for that social media. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, uh, the, so I'm, I'm seeing a couple questions come up. One of Oops. which we're going to touch on in a second. And these are more technical things like Ian asked what websites are good to create. Um, and, and we'll touch on that cause that's going to come up literally after in a moment. Um, and then Josh asks, what's Abe's opinion about live chat features mm. on websites? Okay. Uh, so which one do we want to uh, cover first? Well, let me, let me see what's on. Um, well, let's talk about live chat. Let's talk about the uh, live chat because that can segue us into a way to get in touch and stay in touch. Yeah. Okay, cool. So live chat um, is great. Like if you, um, if, if you were always online or if you're always available, like I know people and we all know people that like uh, reply to our text messages, like within a couple seconds, right? It doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. like the type of day. I'm like, so what? how are you always able to reply so fast? Like, uh, but if that's your thing, if you're always like on your phone, if you're always, um, you know, replying to text and like that makes sense for you as a business person or a creative, um, then by all means, like live chat, uh, you know, set it up, like set up a live chat on your website. Um, so that, you know, when people get there, um, and they, you, you do want them to know that they can contact you anytime, um, that it's available. Right. But you're setting up like, uh, basically you're setting up your own boundaries, right? <laughs> like we, we learned this the hard way, right? Like totally, when, totally. when we get like too busy, yep. when we get like too available to contact then like, it could, it could start to interfere with like your actual gigs. It could start to interfere with like, you know, your deep work and your deep focus when you're trying to um, focus on something else. And like, it's, it's, it's harder to turn it off. So that's a good, really good question. Was that Josh? Yes. Yeah. So Josh, um, like, um, uh, yeah, live chat is great if you want to be available at all times, but just set your boundaries, like be really clear about when you're on, when you're off, um, when, when they, people can, uh, uh expect to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, reply back to, mm -hmm. uh, I know in a lot of li the live chat things you can, you can have, you know, basically like a, a red dot or a green dot, something like that when you're online or offline or when, uh, with a lot of the new bot based, uh, uh, chat, like you can have auto replies, right. You can like auto reply saying like, Hey, I'm not on right now, but I'll get back to you within 24 hours. So just setting those expectations for people that contact you works for live chat works for email. It works for, uh, what else, what else can uh, we do? Right. Like, L like live chat, um, email, contact forms, contact forms. I, I, I think for DJs, those would be the main things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think those would be the main things that would be applicable for DJs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, so even if even if you put your phone number on your website, like you don't want to just put your phone number like without any instructions, right? Like, what what a good a good part of 
you know, designing your own website and just being, just having that control over how people get in contact with you and how people like come into your business um, uh, is, is, is um, setting those clear expectations. So like if you do put your phone number on the site, have a little blurb right underneath it saying like, what, what, what can people expect when they call? Right. Mm-hmm. Are they going to be get, are they going to get you at your like girl's house being like, hello, <laughs> 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 like when you ain't ready for them, you know, right. like, and then that right. could be a missed opportunity for you. If you give, if you give a phone number on your website and then, um, you know, people call you and like, you're just not available like ever. Right. Um, so you want to uh, just set those clear expectations, whether it be uh, putting your phone number up, putting it on your contact, uh, on your contact page or in your contact form. Um, so when that contact form gets sent to you, um, uh, what, what was the, was, what does the, the, the potential client see? What do they read? Um, what can they do next? So the, I guess we can, we can think about it that way. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this, the second point in getting your website to work for you, segueing in wonderful question, Josh, to allow us to segue. Yeah. Thanks. Josh. Uh, the, it's a way to get in touch and stay in touch with potential clients. So one of the ways that we did it on my site was implementing a contact form. And I will show you this right now. Everybody see that all right? You see that all right? Yeah. So people use this frequently to contact me for, for gigs. So it's a way when someone might be, I might be doing a wedding and a friend of the bride is there and they might be getting married or they know someone who's getting married. So they'll come out to me and get my card and pass it off to somebody that they know and say, Hey, you need to check out Shammy. So the person gets online, goes to my site, sees the contact form, very clear at the menu navigation. And then this is what they see. And this was created with a gravity form plugin through we created my site with WordPress, Mm -hmm. which gives you the flexibility to add widgets, I would say widgets and different apps uh, that integrate really well with WordPress. And you have flexibility, it allows for a lot of power, actually, and flexibility for what you want to do with your site. So in this case, and I'm going to just show as an example of what we had talked about, Yeah. So that field, let's talk about that. So, yes, yes. so that was cool, right? Like this, this, so, so uh, w- like Arash said, like we built this in WordPress. Um, we use the plugin called gravity forms. There's a lot of different ones, but this is the one that, um, um, you know, we, we, we like using and we found it's pretty stable. So what, what you could do on uh, with uh, custom WordPress sites. And when you're using this level of customization, we are working with a web designer, you can make it really tailored to you and your business um, this is something like uh, like Squarespace. If you build a Squarespace site, you like you could have a form like a Wix site or a Google's uh, uh, or uh, uh, I think Google has their own websites now. Um, but um, you can, yeah, GoDaddy site is a, is another one. Uh, but you can you can have very simple like email me for, forms, right? So it's like name, first name, last name, email, message. But like this one, we created this from scratch. Um, we really thought about um, Chevy D's business and thinking about um, how he wants to get contacted, how he wants to um, you know, uh, have conversations and how he can best like manage his time. So like nobody really talks about like a website as a way to manage your time as a, as a DJ or a creative, but like, I think it's like, you know, crucial to like go back to really the basics, like, and think about your customers. How do I want them to reach out to me? And like, what are my boundaries or like, how can I make it clear that like, I will get back to them this way mm-hmm. um, as opposed to just leaving it completely open and just having, you know, the stress of a million people contact you <laughs> right. at once. Right. Um, you know, I mean, it's always, it's, it's great. Like you want that to be the problem, right? Like you yeah. want to be booked, booked out, but at the same time you want, you don't want to like lose people or like really tarnish your, um, your, your reputation or your brand, but like, being a flake or like not getting back to people. So a way to control that process is here, like in the contact form. So uh, phone number, once you start filling it out, like something new popped up, this question that says, is it okay if I get back to you by text message? So if you delete that, um, you probably got to refresh it, right? Um, Or was it there? Oh yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, see, it's not there right now. So there's no, how, if, is it okay if I get back to you by text message? So that only pops up when you start putting in your phone number, boom. Is it okay if I get back to you by a text message? Yes or no. So like that's another way to customize the communication with your clients uh, just through your, your contact form. So this, like we're saying, um, uh, you know, is a, is a, a, you know, custom built form. Uh, did we do something with that next field? Mm -hmm. Just saying hi. Mm -hmm. So if it says just saying hi, oh, there you go. So you have your subject line, and your message, but if you change that, what happens? Boom. See, uh, I need a DJ for my event. So once you select that in the field, like we have what's called conditional fields. That's more of a technical thing, but you can really get it granular and, um, um, and, and make it really easy for people to give them the information that you need as a business person or as a DJ. <laughs> it's over party. Heck yeah, man. Can't wait. Oh uh, yeah. People are going to be partying in the streets when this is all over. Seriously. Uh, but yeah, like, so, you know, that date picker pops up. Um, this is something that you can do with, um, you know, any, any good web designer that is worth their salt, like mm -hmm. to, to, to design custom forms for you to make your business work for you. And if you don't have that, if you're, you just have the budget, you know, just to really like DIY, do it yourself right now. Like, um, just think about it. Like, think about like, how can I just put some text in there? Um, or e even in the follow-up email, like anybody has a, a f ability to do a follow-up email to like ask these questions. Mm -hmm. So just think about, you know, the website, um, all the tools at your disposal um, to be work for your business rather than like, you know, leave it completely wide open and have, um, you know, customers like, you know, dictate everything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You, what Abe is, is, is getting at is, how to use your website to influence the behavior of your potential clients, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of calling you at three in the morning, like, yeah, we need a party. That's, you don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's showing them like here, do this, then this, then this to get in touch with me. Like he was saying, it sets up expectations. So if you have a bot that uh, it can have an autoresponder, like, Hey, uh, Josh wants to put a bot on his site. So Dapper Josh is not available right now, but we'll get, he'll get back to you as soon as, you know, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard or whatever. Yep. Um, so having these things, it, it communicates the message of how your potential client should engage with you. Yeah. And so like, uh, so let's just say somebody's filling out this form. They can subscribe to my mailing list. Some people do, some people don't. Um, wash your hands to be safe. You know, we gotta have a little fun. So they submit. And then I say, this is what Very automatically simple. pops up, right? I'll just like, I'll get in touch with you soon. So they know to expect either an email or a text from me. Yeah. Uh, and so far I tend to use email, uh, but a few times I've texted people just so they know that I got in touch with you mm -hmm. or I got your message. And then I get an email basically with all those fields populated and they let me know what's going on. So I get a sense of what their event is, what that my availability is. And I start with, I start the email chain from there. Yeah. So to go back to the chat box um, question, right. About yeah. having a, a direct chat line on the site. Like that, that's basically what we just did. Yep. Like, but it's just a more simplified form of it. So chat, chat, chat bots or, um, you know, chat windows are basically like live real time contact forms. Right. Yes. And you don't always want to have that real time thing, especially if you're, it's three in the morning, like you said, uh, you're not working or you're not, you're sleeping. Um, yeah. and you just, you just don't have the, the bandwidth to, um, um, to just reply right away so you have to program all of those into the chat bot to say like okay if it's this time or if i'm offline reply with this message or if it's at this time reply with this message mm -hmm. so for the most part it's, it's great i think it's we're evolving that way in terms of um, web communication and the cool thing about chat bots is um um, a lot of the the the, the ideas there like uh, applied to say like alexa or like google yeah. home yeah. Um, so voice assistants, like that's like, you know, advanced level stuff. Like we don't have to talk about right that, that now, but we, you know, just, just thinking about the, the basic contact form and just the basic like communication, 
um, just just uh, just get down to that level um, if you're just starting your website or you're just um, building out your business like right now. Yes. Um, and one of the things if we're talking about like text with in relation to contacts, contact forms, there, there are one of the things that Abe and I were, were discussing for the next iteration of the site is using a service like Twilio. Yeah. So when people put their number in that, that Twilio is basically an API, right? That allows uh, text communication back and forth, right? So you can develop a program that works with text and through Twilio, uh, I think text messages can automatically get to you uh, or to your potential client without you even needing to do that. Mm -hmm. to text them right away. Um, so that can be a way like once they hit submit, they can get a text. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, hey, I got your message and I'll be reaching out to you shortly. Amazing. Imagine what that does for your clients, potential clients that want to hire you like, yo, he's on his game right yeah. now. So some that yeah. consider how to use the technology that's out there to your advantage. Right. And it is a little bit more technical when you start to talk about Twilio or whatever, but if that's the way that your clients like get in touch and you, you, you want to, you know, be in contact that way, like it's way more personal, right? Like if people get a text message, then like uh, an email that they only check when they open up their email program. Right. Uh, I mean, we're all on smartphones right now. So, you know, a lot of us do have email on our phones, but for, for some people like, you know, they, it gets lost or they don't, they, they have it with all of their like H and M and gap emails coming in and like, it gets lost, <laughs> yeah. but like text message is just like, Oh, that's a new message. Like if it's not like, you know, um, uh, Verizon or T-Mobile saying I have like 10 minutes left on my plan yeah. and like, it's something important, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. So a way, a way to get in touch on your website, whether that be a contact form or a chat box or you know, listing your phone number, being really clear about it. And then um, uh, a way to stay in touch is really important too. And we saw that on your form, Shan, uh, with uh, uh, subscribe to my newsletter, yes, yes. or no. Um, so that's just another way to stay in touch. So if people do take the proactive step of contacting you for something, you're giving them the option to, um, to stay in touch, uh, yes. whether that be through email or Twilio text, uh, whatever, but, um, you know, it's good because you can, you can get back to people, say they're not ready to do business with you right then, um, because of whatever reason, uh, when they reached out, uh, but maybe down the line, they'll be ready. Right. Like mm -hmm. we were talking about with DJ Michelle, uh, Pesci's site, like, um, uh, a lot of these big events, um, have, have stuff fall out, um, like all the time just for all sorts of different reasons. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if they need a backup DJ, they'd be like, okay, like who's next on the list or, and if they know, already know you because they just saw your, your email update about, you know, your latest mix, um, or, you know, the latest events that you did, then, you know, that's, that has more of the, the, the no like, and trust thing. Like they already know your name. They're already familiar with you. They know this is what you do. They can go to your website again, uh, and check you out again. And then, you know, go through the process of booking you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I will do uh, a series or a webinar on email list and why it's important Ooh. to start one and build one. So did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Okay. Um, so that like, look out for that in the future, but that will be, uh, something you definitely want to pay attention to. Um, now, the third thing that you need to have for your website to help you make money is a way to have it make money. So yeah. you, you got to find a way to get paid. So if you're doing a wedding, particularly for weddings, if you want to have somebody give, make a deposit, the OG way of doing it was people would sign a check and like mail it over, right? But in today's age, things can happen super quick. And there are, many, there are many ways that people can conduct payments with Venmo, PayPal, et cetera. Uh, you want to make it as easy as possible and make sure that your site and your business is set up and ready to accept payments. Because one of the things that I talk about with my Spin to Six students is you want to make the whole process, onboarding process, when people want to work with you, seamless. You don't want to create points of friction because if people have to go through barriers to pay you or to find you. It makes them not want to work with you quick, quick. If I have to struggle to get you on the phone, I'm not going to hire you. If I have to struggle to figure out how I'm going to pay you, I'm not, forget it. I'm just not going to work with you. And I've lost gigs because I was slow to send a contract or I've lost gigs because it took too long to go back and forth and find the time to like 
chat with a client. They were busy. I was busy. And it like went for weeks. And yeah. when I reached out, I just never heard back from them. So you really want to make sure that your process is as seamless as possible. And how we did it with my site, booking. I always get confused if it's booking or bookings. We have a couple of them for international clients from this what I true. remember. This is true. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of URLs there. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. We had a Canadian client not able to pay because it was a Canada card. And we're like, oh, they're distinguishing between domestic and international yeah. cards. It was a whole thing. But Abe figured it out. Because he was G. <laughs> he did. Uh, so with me, when I have a wedding and somebody says, yes, we want to work with you, one of the things that I do is have, we've created a secure way to make payments on my site. One of the things it does, it makes you look super official. Yeah, it's like he has his ish together. So this is basically a payment processor and they can pick here because it's through Stripe integrated with gravity forms. We can customize how we want the form to look like so people can, I will know when people make payments, I have a reference to know if this is a deposit or if this is the final payment on things and they can put all their stuff and they still have the option to subscribe if they want to. Um, they normally don't when it comes to payment, but because <laughs> they've already subscribed <laughs> when they reached out. Exactly. But, but this is an example of like seamlessness yeah. with your site. Yeah. So right there um, uh, below event description, that little bit of text right there. Can you read that out loud? Yeah. An email receipt with this one line description will be sent to you for your records. So that was what we were talking about earlier with like clarity, expectations, like when people give you um their uh their their credit card information like they want to know that it's safe so you know when you do get to this process and like the no like and trust factor they already trust you they're already ready to pay you um very few people get to this page and and this is not uh, correct me if i'm wrong shammy hmm. um this not this is not available like this this site uh this this page on your web website is not publicly available un no. unless you give it directly to clients right yes yeah, so that's another thing that you could think about with um, websites that you create. I don't know how doable this is with some of the easier, um, easier marketed uh, website creators like Squarespace or uh, Wix or Weebly, uh, but I know with WordPress and hiring a WordPress designer, um, you could do this. You could have it not present on the front of your site, but you can only give it to clients or leads that are ready to pay. And that, that's, that's great, right? Like sometimes you don't want to have all of this um, payment processor to the general public, right? It's just like, this is not for everybody. This is for the clients that are ready to work with you, ready to put their deposit down or pay in full. So um, yeah, this is a great, uh, you know, uh, this is a great uh, example uh, of uh, what we were talking about lately or last with the contact forms and applying that to just basically a, a payment form. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this, this is just for like uh Shammy D's business, right? This might not be yeah. for yours, but this is what works for him. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's an example of that. Um, and there are other ways, there are other ways, like one of the ways you can get set up for something like this is you have to apply to a site like Stripe, right? Yeah. An account set up with Stripe. You can do things if you don't want to go that elaborate or if it's not cost effective at the moment to hire a designer to get all this set up, you have other options like PayPal. You can send invoices through PayPal. That's still a seamless way to go. Uh, it doesn't make you look any less professional by any means. Let, like, let that be clear. Yeah. If you can send one email that says, this is what I'm doing next. Expect this to come to you. Expect that to come to you. Then they know what's going on. And with something like PayPal, Square, uh, QuickBooks Online, you can make payments and that if you have, if you use QuickBooks for your accounting software, like it's once they pay, it automatically connects to everything. It just makes your tax season accounting life super seamless um, or easier. Uh, but if you have to go in person, like at the wedding, let's say you've okayed with them to pay you the final amount at the wedding, then you can take the little square reader. I thought I had it with me, but a little square reader that they can swipe and make the credit card payments right then and there. Yeah, I, I really like Square. Um, I, start, I, I used that like for a long time when I was doing uh, in-person transactions and, you know, DJs and uh, event professionals uh, do have that 
uh, we're talking about websites today, but then they do have that physical in-person um, component. Mm -hmm. So if you, if people do feel more comfortable, like giving you their credit card in person at the event where they hired you, then like, it might be a good idea to like set up your entire process through Square, um, squareup.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, squareup.com where you, you order the reader, you set it up. So uh, when people do pay you with a credit card, it gets direct deposited into your bank account. Um, and it just, it just makes it super simple. Like we don't want to be depositing checks anymore. If we have to, uh, they take too long. Uh, there's potential for fraud and yeah. you know, these, this is the, this is the new era of, uh, uh, digital payments. And so square has a great sweat of uh, suite of tools, uh, like the in-person card reader. They also have a way to do invoicing. So if you sign up for the card reader, you already have the ability to basically, um, uh, invoice uh, and and create an invoice for your clients and so that is that can be hyperlinked that can be sent via email um, so they make it really easy for you to do that in square uh, what else do they have uh, if you ever get into say um, selling like uh, uh, um, like physical mixtapes or whatever like even programs like your spin to six program like you can even um, transition your square account into an online shop mm -hmm. and you can just have people purchase uh, 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 those things from your online shop so you can also integrate that into your website uh, but square makes it really easy I really like square another really good one is gumroad.com right. right so gumroad really focuses on like um, uh, digital creatives and like digital downloads for the most part but um, one thing that we have talked about in the past is like, say you were to, uh, uh, you wanted to say sell uh, like um, your service, like a, a, an event, right? Like you wanted to book it on an event. Like we, what you could do with Gumroad is like, you can give them like a PDF download of like, this is what happens when uh, you book me for an event. So basically you are selling something digitally a pdf but that pdf has all the all the uh, instructions or uh you know it has uh how you how you do your service um you can you can put together say like a you know like a portfolio or a book um that lists out you know how your event actually um goes down or how you mm -hmm. offer your services as a pdf and then you could just get paid through gumroad so all these things gumroad square uh paypal uh, they all take a little cut of the credit card processor fee. It's usually between like 2.5 to like 3%, 3.5%, which is like negligible, right? Like you do that on your taxes anyway. It's just like, like what Arash was saying, like, um, you want, you want to, you want to make it easy <laughs> for people to pay when they're ready to pay. And you also want to, um, uh, make it easy for the money to go into your bank account. <laughs> so seamless, seamless. yeah, just make it seamless for everybody involved and like sign up for the, uh, one of these services and you know, they're just getting better all the time. I use PayPal a lot for my business. So, um, I just sent out a PayPal invoice yesterday to one of my clients and you know, the process was, you know, just like we're talking about, like, you know, just making it really clear. You could even put it in the invoice notes, like, uh, uh, payment one of, uh, this is what I did payment one of three uh, link to sign contract. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like we were saying, like if they want to sign a contract before giving you a payment, like you can do that. You can have that contract. You can put it up on your Dropbox, copy the link and then put that link in your PayPal invoice. So everything is like square. Everything is like on the up and up. And um, you have that for your records. Your clients have it for their records and um, uh, you know, everyone's happy. Yeah. Yep. And one of the things that it's one of the things that you mentioned in our prep talk, Abe, was that websites are always a work in progress. Do you yeah. want to elaborate on that? Yeah, websites are always a work in progress. Like you're never um um like the same person, like <laughs> you're never the same business person. Like if, if you learn one new thing, say uh you know, uh, PayPal invoicing, say from like today's webinar, uh, you know, and you want to integrate that into your website, then like your website's now different. So uh, um, like, it's always a work in progress. It's like, it's more important to just get it up and get started and get tweaking on it, like not twerking, but uh, <laughs> get, get tweaking, get tweaking your website. And, you know, just start to, to edit it and update it and like have it evolve as you and your business evolves and you and your story evolves. If you had, um, say, uh, a couple of events in a row and you're just like, oh, man, like I haven't updated my website. Just, you know, take some time to do it. Like that's something if you don't have anything up at all right now, you can start to think about it. You could pull out a piece of paper saying like, OK, this is how my business has been running. 
Like I usually like have like 10 gigs that I book in a row and then like, you know, a bunch of down periods or whatever. Right. So like start to structure your time so that, you know, during those down periods, you can like update the site with, um, you know, what, what you've done already and what you want to do. Um, so I think you do a really good job, uh, Shami D on that, um, because you list your events, but you also have like, uh, we set up this custom thing with your Tumblr, which, yeah. you know, we asked, I asked you at the beginning, it's just like, what what's really easy for you to post? Like if it is social media, like Tumblr, like there are things that like can feed it into your website or, um, you know, Instagram, you can put up a widget, um, that posts your Instagram posts. So it could just be, um, you know, a uh, 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 culminating all those different things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, if you scroll down, um, so that's straight out of Tumblr, um, uh, uh, is, is what you posted today, right. About this webinar, like yes. this is, this is, this is just happened and it just gets auto populated onto, um, his home homepage. Um, so, uh, yeah, there are ways to, uh, post current content. Um, and, uh, you know, just always, always be working on your, on your, on your site and like updating your site, like, especially from the, the, like the stuff that we're talking about with payments and contact form. I feel like that's like so important. And like less people think about that, that was like, Oh, my contact form is working. Like, right. Great. But like, is it working for you? Right. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah. There's definite difference. Uh, I want to get to Ian's question on what websites are good to create websites on. Uh, we have a few options. Um, do you want to touch on any of them, Abe, first? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've mentioned a couple already, um, um, like WordPress, which is what shamyd.com is on. Um, so there's two types of WordPress. One is um, WordPress self-hosted, which is what we're doing. Basically, um, you're able to either buy or uh, create a, a custom WordPress theme, and you host that on your own uh, web host. So that gets really technical. Um, best thing to do is just hire a web designer to figure that out with you. Um, um, the costs for that are usually the cost of the, the web design that you work on. And then um, you pay for your URL. If you don't have a URL already, which is about, you know, maybe like seven to $15 a year um, for your um, domain slash URL. Um, and then um, it, the hosting uh, can, can go any, anywhere from like $3 a month all the way to like, you know, $300 a month, depending on how big your site is. But if you're just like an individual um, doing um, stuff like this, having an informational site with uh, some uh, uh, um, contact forms, um, your story, videos, all that kind of things, then, you know, you, you could, you could start expect, expect something like between five and $10 a month um, for your hosting. Um, uh, that's different than wordpress.com, which it, I really recommend um, if you're just getting started out and you're just doing it DIY. Um, wordpress.com um, has a business plan that's like 25 bucks a month, I think. And that gives, that gives you just like just the right amount of customization and get it out there like web design if you do choose to go the DIY route. Um, and you can just find that on wordpress.com to find out about, more about what that comes with. One of them is, uh, I think you get like a uh, simple payments on wordpress.com. So mm. like that takes care of it for you. Um, uh, one that's really popular and probably is on like every podcast imaginable, uh, <laughs> is Squarespace. Right. Um, and so they really pride themselves on like design and like having it look like really trendy. Right. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to show them like that Squarespace, um, site, um, yes. uh, so they can, they can see, uh, uh, an example of what that looks like. Yes. And, uh, I definitely recommend Squarespace is one of my recommendations when, uh, yeah, they, they knew who they were targeting with this. Actually one. go to, um, djpromote.com. That's a Squarespace site. Oh, that's actually a really good one. Cool. Excuse me, stomach's growling. I don't all know if you good. hear that. I heard it. It's all good. <laughs> Dinner time. So here's DJ Promote. Yeah, so this is DJ Promote's website. So what we were talking about before, no like and trust. Like, what is he doing? He's showing his work, right? The first thing that you see is a player to, like, play his music. Um, uh, he's got some Kanye mixes. Daft Punk. So this is the type of stuff that he spins. Uh, he has this Orlando night one Serato playlist, night two Serato playlist. So like uh, you can click on those to, to see 
what um, went down. Uh, this is really cool. Um, uh, how he he put together um, his tracks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you go back to the website, um, it, it, you know it's it's really just music based. Like for this guy, it's like all about the music, right? There's like no text, no nothing. So like you you get to know him, and you get to like him if or not like him based on like that. And then scrolling down, you got upcoming shows. So this is something built into the Squarespace sites for, excuse me, um, DJs and musicians. Um, you have gigs, upcoming gigs. So they make it really easy for you to say um, the date of the gig, May 1st, Friday, the name of the gig, Project 25, the location, San Diego, California, and then the RSVP um, if there's an Eventbrite or other ways to um, uh, uh, RSVP for that event. And then you can, um, you know, populate your site like this. Um, he uses a background image right there of him uh, working a crowd, which uh, Shammy D is very familiar with. That looks like our old school. You know what it does? That looks like UCSD. <laughs> no, it really does. I think that is. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, that's, yeah, those are like dorms. I think that's the middle of the dorms right there. The yeah. new dorms or new, new for us. Uh, <laughs> So if you uh, scroll down, back up or oh, that's the end. That's uh, so at the end of the site, you know, Squarespace allows you to put in your social, um, your social media links like this, like Mixcloud, uh, YouTube, um, Spotify. So you can click those out to go. So this is like a really good example of just like a one pager, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can click to those. If you click about, oops or contact. So about, so here, Squarespace just makes it really just, you know, clean and simple. Like you can just type in text, put in a background image, and then that's that. So the contact page, if you click on that, you're going to see, this is very different from Shammy D's contact page. So he makes everything available, like just via this email address, which is, you know, fine for a lot of, a lot of people, and a lot of businesses. So, but he's living in his email inbox, right? This way, because mm -hmm. there's no, there's no instructions on, um, you know, what to expect when you email him. Uh, it's just basically like email me your question or email me whatever you're, you're thinking about for your event. And then, you know, everything gets sorted out in that back and forth. Um, and, and this is, you know, this is fine for a lot of people, but if you want to have, you know, more control over your, 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 your business and, um, uh, start to, uh, uh, you know, make it, make it work for you, your website work for you. I really suggest like doing something like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. with the contact form. Absolutely. But yeah, like this is a pretty good uh, Squarespace site. It's really, really simple. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But it has basically how his business is run, like upcoming shows and then what he does, like his work, his actual work. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is like my music page. Like yeah. He has yeah. his own section. He has edits. And this is what I talk about when, if you've seen the webinar on the system you need in place to grow your DJ business, part of the assets are making sure what kind of music do you have? Being a producer helps, does help you. It can become an asset. So in his case, he has something called DJ edits that you can download and turn up that has <laughs> his name attached to it. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful avenue for you to explore. And in this case, he's attached it to his site. It just makes the site a little more robust. It makes people who are interested in him be like, oh, dope. He produces as well. Like, let's yeah. see what this is about. Yeah. And going back to your assets thing. So like once you get on Squarespace, you're just like, um, uh, it reminds me of that Dane Cook joke when huh. um, he's working a drive through and then uh, um, someone's asking him like once, once they're finished with their order and then they're like, uh, where do I go? <laughs> and he's like on the only path that you're on directly to the first window. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but like you know that's 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 sort of uh what's 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 happening here is is uh uh if you go back to the the dj edits thing yeah. um um when 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 you go on a squarespace site like you know where do you go like you get your assets ready beforehand like these images uh, for all these album covers and then what they're called like you're gonna have to build that yourself if yes. you're building your own website on squarespace yes so like it is really important once you pick your theme on a squarespace site or wix or weebly whatever um to have an idea of like what you're going to put up there or else it's just going to have you know nothing and like right. just a, a colored background and text right 
and like people just get really overwhelmed and then they never launch their website. Right. So like everything that you've talked about already in your program is like so crucial to, to like getting this stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just content. It's content. It's content. Yeah. You got You got to fill in the blanks with something. Totally. Totally. So Ian, I hope, I hope that was helpful. I, uh, the, so like Wix, which <laughs> Abe and I call like the Geico websites because their promotion is like insane. Uh, <laughs> Wix, Weebly, um, Squarespace would be the other ones. GoDaddy has a design component to it. Um, Weebly, we don't really recommend. Uh, Wix, no, I've, I've not used it. You can probably make stuff happen, but I think there's stronger options outside of, we think there's stronger options outside yeah. of uh, Weebly. Um, Wix, like if you use a free site, the Wix banner is always on or the Wix logo yeah. is always a part That's of true. it, right? It just doesn't look, it doesn't look know, professional. Yeah. yeah. This site made a Weebly or this site made a Wix. Like, you know, it, it's worth it to like pay up front to get that like non-branded um, website up. And there's this, just the thing with all of the website builders, whether it be like GoDaddy or Squarespace or uh, Wix, um, uh, it, it really requires you to do a little bit of design <laughs> and to know a little bit and to like, you know, do some trial and error because, you know, when you see these template websites on any of these website builders, like these are like specifically created by designers. So when you get in there yourself and you're like, Oh, like I can't make my site look like that. Like think about why that is. So uh, it really comes back to the assets, right? So you mm -hmm. could totally get something looking like DJ promote site. Mm -hmm. um, and that is totally cool for a lot of, um, a lot of DJs and a lot of that, that that's one of the best, better DJ sites that I've seen. Right. Um, because he has something, some things to sell. He has some things to show and he has a way uh, to, um, you know, get in contact. So he has a lot of the elements that we talked about. And if that's good enough for you, like just think about what makes that site his, like a lot of it is photography. Yes. So if you sign up for a Squarespace site with that theme and you don't have professional photography, then it's going to look Bobo, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to, it's not going to look right. 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 So just lean on your strengths. If you have a good photographer friend that's like willing to take dope pictures of you um, spinning or um, doing events, or you have a bunch of, uh, if you say you've done a lot of weddings and like uh, you, you better have the contact info of the wedding photographers and like say, yo, I, I, can I get a, a, a um, uh, you know, those shots of, of, of me? Because yeah. a lot of times like they don't, they give it to the couples, but they don't necessarily give it to the DJs. So make friends at your events whether that be at concerts or weddings or uh, corporate events, um, uh, make friends for those photographers and uh, keep those in mind just to, to populate your website. And you, you should always, always, you know, give credit uh, where credit's due, of course. But a lot of times they're like, yeah, sure. I'll give you, because they don't really think about, you know, the DJ at their, at their wedding. Cause they're, they're working like you, they're a vendor like yeah, you. Exactly. Um, so like they're your peer. Um, yeah. So it's no, ain't no thing to them to like, just give you one JPEG, like big JPEG of, of that. Um, as long as you're, you know, you're, you're nice and you're cordial and you just start that relationship, um, you know, when you, when you see them at the event. Um, but yeah, like you could like totally just populate your site with like past wedding photos and it's professional, right? <laughs> All true. professional photos. So yeah. <laughs> little, little hack there. Yeah. Uh, you just, you just remember that one. I'm telling y'all, Abe is dropping gems for you on this. It saddens me that not enough people are on this, but like it is gems because he's hooking y'all up. Hooking yeah. Y up. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's still on, but Jeff asked, where can I find someone who can help design a website for me? Or do I need to hire a professional? Well, it seems like the same question. I guess yeah. where can I find a site that can design a website? Or do I need to hire a professional? Yeah, so we touched on uh, um, um, some of that already, Jeff, with the different uh, DIY or do-it-yourself or uh, website builders, um, Squarespace, WordPress.com. Uh, those are our two most re recommended ones uh, for very simple sites. Uh, and then uh, for, for do-it-yourself sites. And then um, if you're trying to look for a web designer, um, you can um, – see, I'm trying to, like, be really – uh, I'm not going to say like, you know, reach out to me, but, um, you know, <laughs> but you can reach out option. to me, send, yeah. send me an email if I'm available then, and, uh, and we're a good fit, then, um, you know, that, that, that can be, uh, something, 
uh, I have a contact page on my, on my site, mm-hmm. <laughs> contact form on my site. But um, uh, you can also look at, uh, you know, go to the sites that you like. It um, doesn't necessarily have to be DJ sites. It can be anything, right? It could be, um, um, uh, you know, like an illustrator site or um, uh, let's see, there's another, there's another link that we had, a good, really good DJ site, um, DJ Charlie uh, oh, right, right. Viaz. So on the bottom of her website, um, if you go to that, um, yeah, it says who the web designer is. So usually the web de- designer is 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 listed in the footer um, for a lot of websites. Um, so you can find web designers that way of sites that you already like. And I I totally like that approach of uh, of you know uh, if they have a style that you really like. Yeah, if you scroll all the way down. Oh, this is this is great. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, she's based in Australia or they're based in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I found um, this DJ site via the web designer, oh. this green, green peas for breakfast. So um, I actually found it the opposite way because I'm more on the, you know, looking at other web designers work, but I, I was like, yo, I got to save this for, um, for Shammy D because it's a good, um, good example. Um, and it, it has everything that we talked about here. It has a way to get in touch as a, a, a good design for the no like and trust factor, testimonials, images, uh, storytelling, like it's all here. Um, uh, and uh, uh, even mixed cloud right there mm-hmm. mixes. So um, yeah, looking at websites of uh, uh, that you admire, trying to track down the web designer that way via the footer. Um, you can also go to sites like, uh, dribble.com um I, I think there's a bunch of bees in there i don't know how many bees are in dribble oh like three or something yeah um and even uh i wouldn't say google because um you know google uh doesn't really do a good job <laughs> like yeah. a lot of people game game google uh in terms of finding web designers and a lot of web design agencies are better at seo and gaming yeah. google than actually yeah. designing yep so you're gonna be paying a lot more if you just google like web designer and your local area so i would really just like search the internet for like websites that you like um uh uh dribble is a good one behance i think it's behance.com or behance.net maybe it's dot net it's dot net so Behance.net, I think, is now owned by Adobe, which yes. is the leading uh, creative software. Um, uh, but Behance.net, you can search designers' portfolios, uh, web designers' portfolios, and uh, find work that you like that way. And then you you would start the process, like you know, reaching out to them and, and seeing um, uh, what they charge and uh, if they're a good fit. Great. Um, the... Uh, if we have, if somebody wants to, I would love to do this because it'd be great insight for everybody. If somebody wants to submit their website, we can do an audit and it can give a quick overview on his take. So if people feel, um, uh, if people feel compelled to do so, if you have your website up and running, feel free uh, to throw your website up and we'll take a look at it. But Ian asks, how much do you charge for website design and what's your email to get in touch with you? So Ian, I put Abe's website in the chat. It's abecahuto.com. And you can uh, send, send him an email, contact him, and he'll, you can discuss details together. Yeah, yeah. happy to stuff, discuss that with you, Ian. But if nobody is feeling uh, excited about an audit, I'm guessing maybe not everybody has their website ready to go. So um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, please let us know. But again, if you want to get in touch with Abe and tap into his genius, abecahudo.com, A-B-E-C-A-J-U-D-O.com. We actually had a really good talk with your cousin Rodney uh, two days ago on live streaming. Udo's taking over, man. Yeah. (laughs) Taking over your feet. Holding it down, holding it down. (laughs) I only roll with geniuses and they all happen to have the last name Cahudo. (laughs) So... (laughs) That's cool. Yeah, I, I didn't get to see that one, but um, I think you did. You put the video up, or do you have the recording? Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, I gotta I gotta go back and see that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he held it down. Rodney's a live streaming um, genius, so I definitely 
bank on him too for um, any any questions that I have when, uh, when it comes to live streaming. And that's really important in the time of Corona right now. <laughs> yep, yep. Actually, we have, we have, oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, Dwayne, is it three Ds? We have somebody who's willing to, oh, here we oh, go. Cool. Great. Let's do this. D.D. Dixon? Yeah, so Dwayne, this is, I'm, I'm going to load it up again just to, just to see because this is actually kind of important. Um, I'm going to close this tab. Sorry. So before it did something said like checking your browser. So I thought that was interesting. I don't, did that come up for you, Abe? It did. I, don't, I, I didn't get to, um, oh, now it's, now it's up. Okay. It's up now, but that's, uh, I don't know why it does that, but that's something to pay attention to. I don't know if that's your hosting that does that to make sure the browser is cool. Um, I'm not sure, but something to look at because that threw me off for a moment when I got on your site. Yeah, eventually got there, but there's like a, a initial loading screen or something um, that I, we didn't know if we had the right address. So you, you, yeah. you definitely want to look into that. Cool. Um, or should you share the screen so you can scroll up and down? Okay, I can do that. Okay, let me get out. All right, where'd my Zoom go? Zoom. Here we go. All right. So I do share screen, go to Google Chrome. All right. Is that working? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, here we go. All right. So is it Dwayne? Mm -hmm. So Dwayne, um, so we got your homepage right here. Uh, gl glad we got, a, we got a picture of you. We got what you do. Um, in terms of, uh, are you searching for a DJ that's reasonable, professional, and can make your event enjoyable? So, you know, it's very clear that you're a DJ. Um, you, you, you tell about your what you specialize in, specialize in top 40, uh, urban, pop, uh, et cetera. You also provide sound and lighting. And then you have um, two video embeds. We talked about embeds earlier. These look like YouTube um, embeds. So DJ promo, um, it's current which is great. And then you have um, either a frat or sorority, I think, uh, of me sci-fi sci entertainment, uh, wedding reel. Okay, cool. And then you have a way to, way to stay in touch. You've got a mailing right. list right there, which is great. Wonderful. Um, and then um, uh, you have some other links at the bottom, quick links to your site. And then you have your social media links at the bottom uh, here as well. So you have a lot of what we, what we saw on the past uh, DJ page in terms of, um, you know, a one pager. And then you also have in the menu at the top, um, you know, the bio uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Let's see what that page looks like. All right, cool. A little bit more about you, a little bit about what you do what kind of events you've worked at, um, church, school, miscellaneous, um, you're certified, good. Um, that's some more social proof uh, in terms of uh, your clients, if that matters to them uh, mm -hmm. with the school dance network, um, you know, and it could with a lot of schools, if uh, schools in uh, um, school districts are, are hiring you. Um, and then you have uh, listened to some of my mixes at Hit Mixcloud. So you do have a Mixcloud account. So I'm not sure what uh, website builder you're using to build your site, but you've probably come across like, oh man, I can't do that or I can't do that. And so that usually happens with a lot of these website builders um, um, that you, know, you can only do so much. You can only customize so much. Um, so, um, I, but this one, the, the whole mix is at Mixcloud. I would just go to Mixcloud site uh, and then just download their, um, uh, their logo, uh, and then just actually have a button, uh, as well as this text. So people can know that, oh yeah, you're on Mixcloud as well. Uh, and they know Mixcloud because of the logo. Um, but it looks like you have a lot of, um, the stuff that we talked about. I'm going to click mm -hmm. on book me right now. Oh, see that book wow. me is, is not working. Um, so those are some th things that you can look at on your, on your site. Uh, anybody else who's watching, like you want to test like all these links, right? Uh, you want to make sure that, you know, like what Shammy D was saying, uh, uh, don't make it hard 
for people to give you money <laughs> if they're ready to book you, right? So um, this book me page at the top, I just click the top link. Um, this one works, but the one in the footer did not. So this book me page at the top, cool. That's the one that um, usually our people are seeing. Uh, and it looks very similar to the contact form on Shammy D's site, name, email, phone number, project date, address. So you've thought about all this, which is really cool, Dwayne. Um, what type of project are you looking for? So you filled out this form and um, I don't know if you're still around and uh, could tell us what uh, website builder you're using, but um, that'd be cool. So people can know um, that this is possible on that particular builder. Uh, how did you hear about us? This is common on a lot of different websites. So if this matters to you, this how you how um, how did you hear about us? Um, for a lot of people, it doesn't. Like what matters more is just like you know uh, following up with the the person. But um, uh, uh, yeah, if this matters to you, put it in your form. Tell me more about this project. So you know I could tell that you've been doing this for a while. I could tell that you've been doing this for a while because you're thinking about your website as as a business right as, as a way to feed into your business and it's reflecting that um, and you got frequently asked questions really great you're setting clear expectations for all your clients um, so this is this is a really good example of um, you know uh, a way to use your website um, to work with your business mm -hmm. instead of against your business mm -hmm. my only suggestions are you know just to to tighten up um, those things. So like the book me page at the bottom of the, of the website should go to the same book me link if you could change that. So making sure the links work. Um, uh, it looks like you got a store maybe. Let's see. Click. Oh, see that one's not working either. So yeah, um, just check for dead links. Um, just definitely um, um, just just that attention to detail is probably my next um, my next thing. Arash, what do you think? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, I mean, you might, you could even consider taking out those links entirely at the bottom or just putting in the ones that you think are most important for your business. Also, you use webs.com. So that was the site okay. that uh, I'm, I'm guessing like webs.com is a similar builder. I know someone else who uses, who has a site similar to this. So I, it, it looks like it's a Squarespace-y kind of Wix Weebly kind of site. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I think it definitely looks good. If there's one thing that I, that caught my attention is the picture, your picture here on your homepage is different from the picture in your bio. Um, so, oh, okay. so you look, you look younger in your bio. It's a nice shot, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I like the jacket. You look hard. I see the gold chains, everything. I dig, I dig. Um, but there, it's almost like with acting, uh, you don't want people you don't want to set up this kind of expectation when they go to the page, they see this and they might see something different when they meet you. Yeah. Have, have your pictures current, have all your assets and your visuals current to what's going on now. Don't get, don't catfish your clients. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's totally like something that, you know, you, you, you don't intend, right. It's just right. like, Oh, these are the pictures that I had. I got them up. And that's great. Like that's, yeah. that's what we're talking about. It's just yep. like, get it up, get it going and, um, uh, and, and, and improve, um, you know, when you can, like, uh, um, like we were saying, like a website's always a work in progress. You don't yeah. have to have it be a static thing because you do have control over it and you do have ability to like you've done, uh, uh update and, and, and share your latest like DJ promo. So, you know, Fantastic. if I put click play right here, like you, you've been working on this. I appreciate the hustle. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, but yeah, like everything, almost everything is here. Like, uh, this is a really good, um, uh, uh, comment and feedback, um, by Shami in that, uh, you know, when people meet you, they want to know like what you look like, uh, face to face. Um, so, uh, if you have another straight on shot or if you have another thing that just shows you, um, uh, that's current, like go with that. Yeah. And the more, the more you put it on your website, the better, right? Like, yeah. you don't, you, you know, you, I know like a lot of people, uh, myself included wanted to be about the work. Um, but you know, when people are, uh, looking for someone to hire and make that personal co uh, connection, then, um, you know, it's good that we use, um, uh, as many, uh, photos of us as, as possible. Totally. Totally. And, and, um, yeah, like I was saying, it kind of sets that expectation when things are more current and consistent across the board. It will stand out to people. Like it stood out to me when I saw the other picture. So uh, the picture in your bio. And, and you, you don't want those moments to happen. That's why consistency matters throughout. But pr 
props that the, here's the thing, Dwayne, that you don't have to now scramble to do a whole new website. Yeah. You're just fixing one picture, right? Yeah. That's the beauty of like getting it up and going. Cause you're tweaking at that point. Yeah. So yeah. props to you for getting it going, man. Like you're, you're doing better than a lot of people right now who don't have a website. Right. Right. And one thing, just even just from like a, a designer's point of view, um, you're doing it. Um, um, it's fine, but the background, uh, looks like, uh, it, it's like, like an image of like either like, uh, dots out of focus or something, or almost look like stars. Mm -hmm. And then it stops for a while. And then there's dots again, uh, just to have that like consistency on like every page, you know, like, um, uh, use the same fonts. Uh, it looks like you're doing most of that. Like, you know, red and black is your color scheme. Um, um, we, we, I don't have it like, available right now, but there's some good sort of like, um, design resources that can give like, you know, people doing it yourself, um, like some basics, uh, design stuff to like, know like what fonts to use, like what colors work well together. Mm -hmm. And like, I can send that to you, um, Shannon D yep. and, uh, you can share that with everybody um, yeah, in please. the recording, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dwayne, for being willing to get your site audited. Appreciate it, man. Cool. And, uh, thank you. thank you all for tuning in. Uh, Ian, I hope, I hope you got uh, Abe's information that you're able to get on his site so you can get in touch with him. Abe, thank you so, so, so much for doing this, man. Really appreciate it. You've dropped so many gems. I don't think they really know what you gave them in this. So I really appreciate you. You're uh, welcome, brother. Yeah, going above and beyond for, for everybody who's watching. Uh, DJs, now's the time. Like it's, it's an unfortunate situation we're in right now, but... If you use this time to your advantage, you can really set yourself up for success. This is how I see the silver lining in all this. Yep. Like, we might not be working, but right now, right now, but this is going to pass. And once this passes, you can set yourself up for success. Cool. So if you want to get in touch again, it's abecahudo.com, A-B-E-C-A-J-U-D-O.com. Uh, and reach out to him if you have questions on websites or want him to design your site. He does a fantastic job and we're getting ready for the next iteration on my site uh, coming yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing my site too in this time of Corona. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're all working. <laughs> we're all working and make sure you check in next week. we got a good series. We're going to be talking about the financials on the for, the for the Culture webinar series. So I will be sending out an email about that. Look out for that. Other than that, yo, thank you, Abe. Once again, y'all enjoy the rest of your Friday, the rest of your weekend, and until next time, peace, peace. Peace.